Hi, my name's um, Colin Dunn from www.cgdown.com. I'm a horror writer. Uh, feel free, if you'd like to, to hop over to my website, pick up a, a few books there, subscribe, or just check out my uh, my blog there. Okay, I'm I'm talking today really about Pro Writing Aid. It's a it's a grammar checker. I came across it um, a few weeks ago, so I've been using it fairly sort of regularly, and fairly sort of extensively now. Uh, I've got the uh, free version of it, as you can see. Uh, here on, on my screen now where you can't actually see it's a free version, but you can see it's pro writing a I haven't really come across many restrictions of uh, the free version if you go to um, their Their website you'll see here. You, it tells you what it's about go premium editing tool plagiarism blog You can log in you do need to sign up or at least I need to do um, to sign up and, and to create an account in order to be able to, uh, to be able to use it on the free one, you have a, a word restriction. Although I haven't come across any word restrictions yet, I edit uh, my stories, which are like literally tens of thousands of words, 40, 50 or, or, or thousand words. But here it says that on the premium, there are no limits. You can edit wherever you are, you know, Google Docs, you can, using Chrome, edit on the move. The pricing plan, as it's stated um, here, one year, obviously $40, two, three, or you can have a lifetime if I were to purchase it which I don't see the need to because I'm getting what I want I think from the free kind of sort of version of it it's $140 as it states uh, states there and that's for a lifetime so it's almost like buying a product rather than subscribing whereas from years one to three it's more of a subscription service really um, but this is where you can go to get to get it you can just as you download it or, or visit this web uh, this address here powerwritingaid.com uh, and then you can obviously download it when you open it, it will be presented with a screen if you haven't opened any files then you won't be presented with any recent files but if you have then you'll have obviously the recent files um, so what I'm going to do is just going to open it briefly to show you what it's about but before I do that the reason I chose this was that this connects directly to Scrivener okay for anybody out there who is uh, aware of Scrivener it's obviously a, a writing tool uh, what I'm actually going to do is briefly open Scrivener just to give you some idea of of what it looks like. So go to maybe one of my stories. Let's go to flat number nine. So open Scrivener. Now Scrivener is this is not a tutorial about Scrivener, but I just it does relate to uh, this uh, uh, software. Uh, Scrivener is. Um, it's basically a writing application, a writing tool, really. It allows you to do what you would normally do, but much more efficiently, much more effectively, in a much more structured way. You have your chapters and, and scenes here. You have a corkboard option that allows you to actually look at your kind of sort of chapters, sort of in turn, or look at all the chapters and so forth across the entire kind of manuscript. And you can tag them as done, 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 or doing there's a lot of metadata. And the compiling options are excellent as well. But ebup and dot mobi and so forth but the reason i chose to show you this was you look at the structure here okay now what we do is you close we'll close this we put a close well it brings up the same sort of structure you can open a file and navigate to your directory or you can go to recent files if you've opened one recently so i'm going to go to the recent files here so it'll open up or it should open up you, know, you see open up my bodies in revolt story and if you look on the left side here the structure is pretty much exactly the same as it is uh, within within Scrivener so it duplicates that file structure which I found very very helpful and you can work on one scene at a time as you would um, with Scrivener so within Pro Write and Aid it links directly to Scrivener now you notice here that the formatting changes it's larger font size it's almost double spaced I'll probably say space and a half everything is left flushed. Now, the reason it does that is to enhance readability. At first, I thought this was a bit gimmicky. I thought, why is it left flush in it? But believe me, when you're spending like 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, or whatever, how long editing, um, you know, three hours or so, it is really, it's really easy on the eye. It takes away a lot of the strain and allows you to focus for longer periods of time. So it's a very good format for it to be in for enhanced readability for you to proofread. For you to edit but when you do say whatever changes you make here when you save those changes it will revert to the original format of your Scrivener document or word if you chose to bring in a word so we'll have a look at this briefly we've got style 
grammar or obviously used words, cliche, sticky, so forth. Now say this is the free, free version here. So we bring up style. Okay, now what it says here, it, style is not the same as grammar. Obviously grammar is much more technical, much more mechanical. It's the tools with which a writer uses to construct obviously his prose, just as a carpenter would use you know, obviously a mallet or a chisel or whatever it is, but that doesn't reflect the skills of his carpentry exactly. It's just the tools that he uses. And obviously grammar is like that. You know, your nouns, your pronouns, your adjectives, verbs and tenses, these are your tools that you use. Whereas the style is really sort of how you use them, how you structure your sentences. Now your style in is looking for certain things, is looking for passive verbs, one hidden verb noun, okay? So what that is, one hidden verb noun, is the existence. So it shows you what it is, okay? Shows you where it is. Okay, see if I can find that. So we look down here, it shows you existence, which was one hidden verb. Now it says, possible hidden verb, try exposing the verb. What that means is it's a, a noun which is being used, which has a kind of sort of adverbial sense to it in that it conveys kind of sort of action. So instead of saying the daughter exists, say the existence, like for instance, in saying uh, an observation has been made instead of saying I observed. So it's kind of sort of, it, that's what they mean by hidden verbs, sort of an, a noun or so forth um, that is being used in such a way where it could be converted to a much stronger, uh, you know, much stronger sentence, you know, by having it as a verb. Um, so you see here, it's looking at adverbs here. We've got passive verbs, so it's looking at um, adverbs here, adverbs here, and potentially if we hover with one of them, uh, use the adverb sparingly. I've noticed with this that it will try and remove every single adverb. Now, some of these you could probably do without. Maybe finally, Carl Davis finally found his puberty. But the true reason I wanted to keep finally in there was to sort of show his level of frustration he's been experiencing over the years of waiting for that day to finally come, and now it has. So I wanted to kind of sort of keep keep that in there. Now, so you just move through the document, looking at stylistic kind of issues, and you say they are color coded as well. They are kind of sort of color coded as well. So you can see unflaggingly again um, using adverbs uh, beginning. Okay, readability may be enhanced by using digging. Okay. So the atrophy of the monkey do, monkey say ethic was digging to, to deep, was beginning to dig. So that wouldn't work. So some of the things that it suggests are completely useless. Other things that it suggests are very, very useful. So you have to kind of use your own judgment. And uh, let's move over to the grammar kind of sort of option for this. Now, obviously the larger text you have, the longer it will take for it to to find. Now it's found four grammar issues, two spelling issues. Now this is just within the first scene. So, you know, obviously if you have many, many scenes and so forth within that structure folder, you know, because we're taking it from Scrivener. So if we come here, it's looking at spare ribs, okay? So it's saying that you put that as a single word, perhaps. And it probably asked me to put um, a comma now, I should imagine. Uh, you might need a comma before this conjunction if it joins two independent clauses. I agree with that. So I could put a comma there. I'm not actually going to make any of these changes now. Um, let's see, eyes staring into her eyes. Again, yeah, probably need a comma. So it's looking for a few a few things there. Okay, so it does it does find a few a few points. It's not brilliant, I must admit, on its grammar checking, and it's not brilliant on its spell checking. But one of the reasons that I use it is just is also for enhanced readability. Because the way that it brings it in from Scrivener and left flushes it and double spaces it and changes the font size of it, but when you save it, it doesn't actually remove or affect the formatting of your previous, of your original story. I think by doing that, it actually makes it far more, far more easier to read and detect mistakes, even without the grammar kind of sort of checking. So you have obviously other options here. We have overused words. So it's coming like that, 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 that kind of sort of pronouns and, and so forth and adjectives um, that is working as overuse. The best thing to do is to take note of them, go through them and see whether or not that is the case. Uh, sticky words are considered to be words which are used, which slow the text down. So the words which possibly could be added, 
removed from the sentence probably don't really add much more meaning to the sentence and could be removed um, because their presence actually sort of slows the reader so got two sticky sentences found let's just scroll down and see what they are okay so that was until uh, he met Sheena for the first time on the 1920 train from London I don't consider that to be what's sticky. Try to reduce the number of glue words to make this sentence more readable. Um, so it says 16 words. The glue words are that was until for that. You could probably look at that and restructure that sentence. So I could probably write um, you know, until he met um, he met Sheena on the 19 train, okay, from London. Probably not for the first time because I know it's revealed later here in dialogue that they they that is for the first time that's conveyed through dialogue. So I can probably remove that. So it does highlight, you know, it does highlight. And we, we, we establish data here that they are on a train. We say train here. So I could probably get rid of the train here or get rid of it down here to avoid that kind of echoing of text. So it does allow you to recognize yourself and allow you to pick up on issues that you would have otherwise missed. Um, you've got lots of kind of repeats and so forth. So it tells you how many phrases were re repeated um also tells you yeah how many kind of sort of phrases like you've got networking net networking there one there one there so it tells you how many words are repeated which may or may not be a problem length it tells you length of sent sentences as well how long your sentences are but that is one entire sentence which is probably too long so you've got long, long sentence 61 words so it highlights the kind of sort of long sentences and gives you a breakdown on the left there of those sentences so again, well, that's actually not two, that's actually two sentences there. Um, but yeah, so it's because they're linked together. So you've got two long sentences together. So that's quite a long sentences. So it might be broken up by either by, by, yeah, well, into two sentences generally. Now, I don't use only this, okay? I wouldn't advise, especially if it's a free grammar check, using only one grammar checker. I use two. Okay, I think any more than two would be probably too much. But the reason I use two is that one won't pick up on everything, but one will pick up on things that another one won't, and vice versa. But they tend to contradict each other sometimes. So you could have load one text into one grammar checker, and it will say, yeah, you need to change this and change that and change the other. Load it into another grammar checker, and it will pick up something entirely different. different. But if you use more than two grammar checkers, then it starts getting a bit confusing because they'll start contradicting each other all over the shop. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to load in here a file. It's just, it's just a file of just a few words that I've kind of written because I wanted to compare just a couple of grammar checkers, the two that I use. Right, get rid of that for a second, excuse me. So I'm going to open up a file. Okay, so loading the file is literally just a few lines. Okay, one a grammar check on this. Okay, and it will say one grammar issue found, one spelling mistake sound. That's a spelling mistake there, very. Okay, so let's click very. One grammar there, your. Okay, it should be, okay, your, obviously with a apostrophe there. Okay, so you are a contraction. You are here to stay. Now, if you want a grammar check on this again, it will say no spelling or grammar issues found. But if you were to read the text, it's not a well-written text at all. There's no imagination to it, there's no structure to it, and it's not supposed to be because it's used obviously for an example for this. So the sentence reads now, or rather the lines, more than one sentence, um, he children were here to stay. Between you and me, there was something here. Uh, I went to the shops. So there are quite a few things wrong with it. He children, makes no sense. Between you and me, no capital letter. Here, as in he, the ability to hear rather than location. I went to the shops uh, and bought a milk. Milk is an unaccountable noun, so you can't have a milk. You could probably have a pint of milk, but if you're not specifying what type of milk, as in like bottles or carton or milk, then you would have to have just some milk. Having gone back home, yeah, having, which is participle, so it's a hanging participle, and that should form part of a subordinate clause, but that's not being picked up. There was many things. No, there were many things, so that's not being packed up either. Then it moves from the plural, uh, into into a singular here that looked like it would be helpful okay it is a pronoun but what noun is that referring to we don't know you're here to stay no capital Y me think it's going to be a very bright day obviously wrong it obviously needs an I to be subject of the verb think think but it's not picking up on any of that at all nothing of that at all okay and this is why I use a second piece of software 
Okay, so if I copy that, open up Word, make sure that opens, then copy that same text in. Now you see the G at the top here, this is for Ginger. Ginger is another spell checker software that I use. And the reason I use both is that I find uh, Writing Pro, um, Writing Pro Aid, well, yeah, really effective in actually picking up the, um, like, for instance, cliched words, sticky words, overuse of pronouns, long sentences, and that sort of thing, um, and you know, overuse of adverbs. But Ginger is really good at picking up other things that the other software simply won't pick up. So I just find it better to use a combination of uh, grammar checkers. So this is the second one that I use called Ginger, and I actually find this quite helpful. Now, if we click on here, it's got various options. You've got sound, so you can have it playing back to you, but that's available only in the premium option. Okay, and you can write, or you can set for a personal trainer, or you can rephrase it, so you can ask for it to rephrase your sentences in what it believes will be a better structure. So if you just click on that, it will actually run through it and it will detect it. Now immediately, it's detected a problem. I have, he children were here to stay, and it's suggesting his children were here to stay. Maybe not. So let's just skip that. Right, between, right, between you and me. Between, it's recognizing there that you need a capital letter. It's also recognizing here that we don't mean here as in the ability to hear, but we mean here as in specifying location. So it's picking up on that. So, there was many things, okay, there were many things. Click on that, you're here to stay, you're here to stay. Okay, recognizing this should be a capital letter. Skip on that. Me thinks it's going to be, I think it's, again, with apostrophe there, not possessive, having a contraction, it's going to be a very bright day. So it picked up on almost everything. I think what it missed out was having gone back home. It missed out that part because that's not a complete sentence on its own because obviously it's expecting the pronoun to which having uh, can be linked. But it's picked up on pretty much everything that this, okay, pro write and aid just failed to notice. But the reason I use pro write and aid is that it links directly with Scrivener. It formats it in a way that makes it very easy to read. And so makes it very easy for you as a human being, as your own editor to pick up on things that otherwise wouldn't show. Um, and it's very good on for style, for overused words, looking at cliches, all that sort of stuff. Whereas Ginger is actually better for grammar. So I use both. So what I normally do is I copy from Scrivener into Word, run it through Ginger, copy it back into Scrivener, and then from Scrivener, I load the file in, I load the file in to Pro Writing Aid, and then run another check on that. So that's, that's it, that's, that's what I do. And the reason I wanted to show this tutorial is that I've been asked a few questions about what works well with Scrivener. This works well with Scrivener, but I wouldn't use it on its own. And I'd always recommend using, uh, on average, like sort of two or so spell checkers. And I say, this offers a premium version as well. Ginger offers a premium version. But if you combine more than one, then I don't think there would be any need to buy, actually, actually purchase um, a spell checker. And of course, there are many more out there. Grammar, Grammarly is obviously probably one, one of the highest rank, ranking uh, pieces of software there. White Smoke, um, After the Deadline, I think is another one. Paper Rater, there's, there's lots, of, lots of ones out there. My advice is to just to choose one that you think will work best for you, test it out, okay? Test it out for yourself. All of them will say that they're the best, but it depends upon your personal needs. And because I wanted one to link in directly with Scrivener, I decided that Pro Write and Aid was the one for me, but to tie in with the use of Ginger as well, which is highly effective in my opinion. Um, so that that's it. If you have any questions, um, feel free to kind of sort of drop me a line. And thank you very much for watching.